Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. IndyCar is entering its biggest weekend of the year. It's Indy 500 week and after watching all 700 practice sessions, seriously they're only 10 left, why do they need so much practice? I have had a good look at all the special liveries on show in Indianapolis. Let's go through every team and car and rate their liveries out of 10. We have some incredible looking liveries on show here. IndyCar has that over Formula 1. So make sure you subscribe, check out the other Indy 500 videos on the channel, and let's jump into the video. Able Motorsports. Well, we start with a livery that we will only see at the Indy 500. RC Ennison is making his first appearance of the year, so this is the Indy 500 livery they went with. Very simple, red and white pattern, and the only logo on show is for teams. I like it, it's very simple, but very nicely done. Reminds me of the current trends of football shirt sponsors not actually appearing on the shirt. They tend to look better than the shirts with really ugly sponsors. I'll give this 7 out of 10. AJ Foyt Racing. Benjamin Pedersen has his normal 2023 livery. And whilst it's not terrible, it's not the best looking orange car in the field. And for that, he gets points deducted. Let's say a 5 out of 10. Santino Ferrucci is sporting a very patriotic livery in support of Homes for Troops. A very good cause, but this livery is dreadful. They've painted the flag in a very strange, unappealing way, and so it gets a 3 out of 10. You can have a thumbs up for merit. Andretti. So Andretti have five cars for us to look at, so they can be forgiven for not putting in too much effort. Colton Herter's car has a tiny bit more blue, and it does look nice, but we're not getting points for buying a small tub of blue paint. 5 out of 10. They've done even less to Kyle Kirkwood's car. 4 out of 10. What about Romain Grosjean? He had a really nice blue, black and pink livery at the last race. They'd have got points just for keeping that. Instead, they've gone back to the yellow DHS livery with a pride flag stapled to the side. Lazy, no effort has been made to incorporate the pride flag into the livery. It's just slapped on half-heartedly. 2 out of 10. Devlin Di Francesco has had about five liveries so far, and this is by far the most boring, with controversial catering company Sodexo as sponsor. Very plain livery and human rights abuses and accusations of bribery. One out of ten. Finally, Marco Andretti is making a one-off appearance, and so his livery is new. It's the best one, a nice mix of colours, and the shading is very good. Seven out of ten. Disappointing from Andretti, either low effort or just bad. Arrows McLaren. The team has been the talk of the town with its throwback liveries and yes they are very very nice. Firstly Pato O'Ward has an all black livery representing McLaren's win at Le Mans in 1995. Looks great like a stealth bomber. 8 out of 10. Felix Rosenquist has an orange version of the 1984 Alan Prost Formula 1 livery. It's fine but not as nice as the original livery so 6 out of 10. Alexander Rossi has an all orange affair, much like Johnny Rutherford's original Indy 500 winner in 1974. It's okay, but looks like the McLarens in Formula 1 a few years ago. All these liveries are better than the Formula 1 livery McLaren will be sporting that combines all three. Rossi gets a 6 out of 10 too. Tony Kanaan is also there and doesn't have a special livery. Orange and black, it's fine, 7 out of 10. Chip Ganassi. Scott Dixon has his normal livery. It's a good livery, but I'm a little disappointed. 6 out of 10. Marcus Ericsson basically has the same livery, but instead of Husky Chocolate, it says Husky Ice Spritz. Lazy, and it's a livery I don't like anyway. 4 out of 10. Alex Palau has an American Legion livery, which is very neat and modern, but doesn't really stand out in any way. 6 out of 10. Takuma Sato is sitting in for Marcus Armstrong. His is the best Chip Ganassi livery, black, green, and white. And it's not terrible, but it's nowhere near as nice as the Texas livery. So the two-time winner gets some points deducted. 5 out of 10. Del Coyne. Barely did anything. David Malukas has his normal livery. And Stingray Rob has some of the colours swapped around. I'm going to put the same amount of effort in as Del Coyne. So just 5 each, I guess. You couldn't paint a Stingray on Stingray Rob's car or something. Dryer and Rainbold Racing. Two one-off liveries for Ryan Hunterway and Stefan Wilson. Sadly, we won't see Wilson in the race after he was injured in a practice crash. His livery was the nicest of the many white and blue cars. Nothing special, but it looked neat and 
that's good enough, I guess. Five out of ten. Hunter Ray has a plain black and green livery. I like it much like Abel's car. It reminds me of the sponsorless football shirts, but it does look a bit more bush league. Six out of ten. Ed Carpenter Racing. Three cars for Carpenter because the boss is joining Renus VK and Connor Daly for the Indy 500. Lazy on the liveries front, VK has his normal livery and Ed Carpenter has basically the same livery with black instead of white. They can have a boring 2 out of 10. Daly's is the same pattern but different colours and it looks good with a couple of red dice for the gambling addicts to get excited about. Bet your Bitcoin on Carpenter Racing, 8 out of 10. Junko's Hollinger. Well, Callum Eilot has his usual livery and it's okay. Yet another black and green livery. It, but it's okay. 6 out of 10. Augustin Canapino, the Argentine rookie, has a livery celebrating Argentina's World Cup win. And it looks fantastic. Best livery on the grid. I give it 10 out of 10. Now, Augustin Canapino is hardly the Lionel Messi of IndyCar, but he has done better than I expected. And it'll be interesting to see how he does in the Indy 500. Will he crash at turn one, or will he push for a top 10 finish? The first option is more likely. Maya Shank. Both Helio Castroneves and Simon Pagano have the same livery, and it's very similar to their normal livery. Just black swapped to white. It's boring. Showered in sponsor logos, slapped on at random. Considering Helio Castroneves could make history, they could have put a bit more effort in on his car at least. One out of ten. Rahal Letterman Lanigan Racing. Rahal Racing have four cars and they have gone out of their way to make them look like other cars in the field. Graham Rahal is yet another runner with a blue and white car, looking like three or four other cars on the Indy grid. Jack Harvey has an orange and black livery that is very similar to a McLaren. Catherine Legg is almost spot on for Marcus Ericsson's Chip Ganassi car. And whilst Christian Lungard has his normal livery, it does look a lot like Will Power's car. Rahal is Mr. Bean. They can have 2.5 out of 10 for each car, or go see what I said about the cars they look like and give them that score. Team Penske. And finally, we have Team Penske. I had high hopes for these cars. Well, Will Power has his normal livery, 5G out of 10. But Joseph Newgarden, who has had a different livery at every race in 2023, I think, has a kind of retro-looking shell livery that I really like. It looks like it'd make a nice t-shirt. 8 out of 10. Scott McLaughlin, meanwhile, has a yellow Penazil livery, which we have seen before, but it will always be cool. I consider this livery the most toyetic. 9 out of 10. Penske knock it out of the park. So, they are all the liveries on the Indy 500 grid. It was a little disappointing, but there were some standout ones there. Canapino, McLaughlin and New Garden have awesome liveries. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which is your favourite? Make sure you subscribe for more Indy 500 videos and other motorsport too. Thank you for watching and have a good one.